Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at Firestar, which is Google's all new cloud database. And first of all, I'd like to show you what we're going to do. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the theory behind Firestar, what Firestar is and what you can do with it. And afterwards, we're going to take the first steps together, creating a Firestar project in Xcode installing all the necessary dependencies and the SDK. So Firestar is Google's all new database and a great addition to the Firebase real-time database that you might already know. But now let's have a look at what Cloud Firestar really is. So first of all, it is a NoSQL Cloud database, which is really flexible and scalable. And it allows you to store and sync data for client and server-side development. And like Firebase, real-time database, it keeps your data in sync across client apps through real-time listeners, and it also offers offline support for mobile and web. So you can build responsive apps that work regardless of network latency or internet connectivity. And the great thing about it is that Firestore offers a native iOS SDK, which makes it extremely easy to use for iOS developers. And I'd like to show you some of the highlights that Firestore offers. So it's very flexible, you get very expressive querying features, real-time updates, and this offline support. And I'd like to go through each of these highlights. So first of all, the Cloud Firestore data model supports flexible and hierarchical data structures. So you store your data in documents organized into collections. And we are going to have a detailed look at that data model in a second. Then we're having these expressive querying features. So in Cloud Firestore, you can use queries to retrieve individual specific documents, or you can use these queries to retrieve all the documents in a collection that match your query parameters. And your queries can include multiple chain filters and combine filtering and sorting. Another great thing are real-time updates. So like real-time database from Firebase, Cloud Firestore uses data synchronization to update data on any connected device. However, it's also designed to perform simple one-time fetch queries very efficiently. So this is really, really cool. And also, Cloud Firestore offers offline support, so it caches data that your app is actively using, so the app can write, read, listen to, and even query data when the device is offline. And when the device comes back online, Cloud Firestore synchronizes any local changes back to Cloud Firestore. And all that happens pretty much automatically, so really, really cool. And I'd like to give you a few details on what the differences between real-time database and Cloud Firestore are. And real-time database is Firebase's original database. It is an efficient low latency solution for mobile apps that require synced states across clients in real time. And Cloud Firestore is Firebase's new flagship database for mobile app development. It improves on the success of real-time databases with a new, more intuitive data model. Uh, Cloud, uh, Cloud Firestore also features richer and faster queries, and it scales better than real-time database. So these are a few of the key differences between real-time database and Cloud Firestore. And as promised, we're now going to have a look at this more intuitive data model, which looks like this. So Cloud Firestore is a no SQL document oriented database. And unlike a SQL database, there are no tables or rows. And instead, you store data in documents, which are organized into collections. And each document contains a set of key value pairs, which is very similar to JSON code and dictionaries. And Cloud Firestore is really optimized for storing large collections of small documents. And just to give you a quick example of what this might look like, let's have a look at this um, little model here with users and some user data, like the first name, last name, and their birth date. 
And as you can see here, we have one collection, which is users. And in this collection, we're storing two documents for our different users at the moment. And the data now put into these documents are the key value pairs that we talked about. So this is the Firestore data model that we can use also in Swift. And I'm going to show you how that works later. So let's now have a more detailed look at the data structures that we can use, for example, nested data in documents, which means that you can nest complex objects like arrays within documents. And if you have simple or fixed lists of data that you want to keep within your documents, this is the easy set, uh, this is the easiest way to set up and streamline your data structure. Or you can also create collections within documents when you have data that might expand over time. So as your list grows, the size of the parent document doesn't change. So you can also get full query capabilities on sub collections. And what we can also do is create collections at the root level of your database and organize disparate data sets. So root level collections offer the most flexibility actually and scalability along with the powerful querying within each collection. And let's now have a quick look and one last example before we get started doing something, which is how this looks in code. So if we want to create a new document, let's say in a collection cities, we want to put a document LA into this cities collection. And then we also want to, to put some data into this document. Then this is what this looks like. So we're taking the Firestore database, we're accessing the collections using the collection function, um, naming the collection, which is in our case cities, now accessing a document, creating this document, if it is not already created, this happens automatically calling this document LA. And then we set the data with key value pairs like we would with JSON or dictionary. And indeed, this is a dictionary. So we have the, we're having the key name with the value Los Angeles, with the state, with the value California, and with the country, which is again the key. And for the value, we have United States. So this is how you do that in code. And this is how it looks then in our Firebase console when we have a look at our database where we get exactly what we just created in code in this nice view. So this is just a quick example of how easy it is to create such a database, how to create a collection, a document, and how to add data to it. And now I'd like to say, let's get started and do something with Cloud Firebase, do all of the setup. So to get started with your first Firestore application, what I already did was opening up firebase.google.com, which is, so to speak, the mother service of Firestore. And here you have to uh, be registered with a or signed in with a Google account. But as soon as you are, you can actually get started, um, get some intro videos about Firebase and so on. But what we'd like to do now is go to our console in the upper right corner. And here I have all my projects, like my Firestore test project that I'm currently using. And what I can also do is add a new project, which I'm going to do now by simply clicking on this add project button. And here I'm going to name that my first Firestore project. And this is going to be for my country region and region here. And I'm going to create that project right now. So after a few seconds, we're going to be taken to the next page where we can do some additional setup with our first project. And as soon as it's finished, we get this nice welcome screen where we can decide for which platform we would actually like to create an application. Either we can create one for iOS, Android, or for the web. And we, of course, are going to select iOS here. And now we already have to know some information about our application, which is our bundle ID. I'm going to go with Combrine Advent and Firestore, Firestore. Uh, app. This is going to be my uh, app name later on. So we have to be sure that this is going to be the bundle ID that we're also going to use. So I'm going to copy that maybe so that we can paste it later. And as soon as I did that, I can actually register my app. And the most important thing for us now is to download the Google service 
info plist file because this file contains everything that associates our application with Firebase and also with the Firestar database. So I go ahead and download this file. We're going to use that in a second. And then we have to think about how we can actually add the Firebase SDK and also Firestar to our application. And if we hit continue, then as you can see, uh, Google tells us that we should actually work with Cocoa Pots here. And if you're not familiar with Cocoa Pots, then head over to CocoaPots.org. And as you can see here, Cocoa Pots is a dependency manager for Swift and, uh, and Objective C Cocoa projects. And install Cocoa Pots on your Mac so that we can continue later. And we're going to skip that step for now and have a look at our database solution. So I'm now in Firebase selecting my database option here under the develop section. And I can now decide if I'd like to use real-time database or cloud Firestore. And I'm deciding that I'd like to use the Firestore beta right now. And I'd like to start in the test mode, which means that anyone with your database reference will be able to read or write data to our data to our database and for demo purposes this is a little bit easier but you can read more about the um, security rules in the documentation of cloud firestore but for us we're going to get started in the test mode which i'm going to enable right now so it's setting up the security rules for us and once we did that we can have a look at the database and here we are. And as you can see, we have a completely empty database at the moment. We could add a collection now right here, or we can do that in a few seconds in code. So let's open up Xcode, pressing Command Shift N here to create a new project. I'm selecting a single view application here, calling it Firestore App or Firestore App with a lower with all the lower cases because that's what I went for with my bundle identifier. And now let me just make sure that they are identical. So I just copied my bundle identifier earlier and now I'm going to paste it right here and they are the same. So we are definitely good to go. And what we should also do now is drag and drop our Google services info plist file into our project and make sure that we've selecting co uh, selected copy items if needed and also add this to our target Firestore app. And then we just open that up for a second again and make sure that the target membership really is activated here in our file inspector on the right. So I'm just selecting the target membership here again and then we are actually good to go. Which means that we are now ready to install the Firestore and Firebase SDK to into our application. And therefore I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to switch now to my desktop and my Firestore app. And here what I have to do is call pod in it, which is going to create, as you can see here, a pod file for me. So as soon as I open up this folder here, which is Firestore app, I have this pod file here that I can also open with Xcode. And I'm going to close my project here. And what I'd like to do now in this pod file is to add this specification here that I just copied and pasted and you will find that specification in the video description below, which is going to install Firebase Core authentication and Firestore with some specifics on where to find that. And now I'm going to save this pod file and I'm going to now call pod install with the um, addition of repo update and I'm going to hit return and this is now going to take some time to download all of that stuff and configuring our Xcode workspace. And now that we are finished, I can open up my Firestore uh, folder again. And as you can see here, we now have, in addition to our Xcode project, we also have this Xcode workspace, which we have to use from now on to open up our project or to open up our workspace, because there is a new addition. As you can see here, we now have 
in our navigator, we have our Firestar app and we have pods, which includes all of the frameworks that we're going to need for Firestar and for Firebase. So I'm going to go back into my application now and into my app delegate. And in App Delegate, there is this one function which is called application did finish launching with options, which is really entry point for our application, which is called right after our application launches. And this is where we have to configure Firebase or uh, Firestore in our case. But what we have to do in order for this to work is first of all, import Firebase here. And then in our application did finish launching with options function, I'm going to call Firebase app configure. And we do not need name and options here. So just call configure. And with that, we are actually done. And we can run this application for the first time and see if we actually get error messages or not. But if we did everything correctly, then our application should start in the simulator and we shouldn't get any errors from, from Firebase. So we could start working with the Firebase database right now. So this looks already pretty good. So let's just wait a couple of seconds here. And, and now we want to connect to the Firestore app or through Firebase. I'm going to allow that. And we have no problems, no error messages here. So let's stop running our app for now and do a very basic call to our database or let's access the database and add some data here. Therefore, I'm going to create a database object right after we configure it our application. And now I just have to initialize that with Firestore. And I can only do that if I import Firestore actually. So right below import Firebase, I'm also going to import Firestore. And now that I did that, I can really create my database DB for database object, and then call Firestore and Firestore. And this gives me a database object. And now I can start doing things like using the database, calling the collection function, adding a collection string. Now let's say we're using the example from the presentation earlier, which was cities. So I'm adding cities here. And now I'm accessing this collection, adding a document with a path. I'm now going to say LA. And now I'm just going to set data using these um, these key value pairs. So I'm using a dictionary here and I'm also going to use a completion handler that I'm going to fill out later. So in set data, what I do is using some brackets here to indicate that I'm now defining a dictionary. My first key is name. The first value is Los Angeles. Second key is state. Second value is California adding a comma here. And now the third key is country. And the value is United States of America. And with that, I have defined the data. Now I can add my completion handler, um, creating one error object here that um, is optional. So one optional error here, and then I can check if let error equals error. So if we have an error object that we can work with, then there was probably an error. So I'm using print and using string interpolation here, accessing the error and its localized description to learn more about the problem. And else, so if there was no error, we can definitely print that the document was successfully created and written. And that should store the first piece of information in our database. So let me just quickly run this in the simulator. We are not doing anything fancy with a user interface or anything. We're just configuring our application, launching our application and saving data to Cloud Firestore. And as you can see here, we get the message document was successfully written, which means that I can now go back into my console, refreshing my website here and the database and now here we have it. We have cities as a collection. We have the city of LA here in our document. And in a few seconds, we should also see the document data 
which we added to our document. And here it is, country USA, name Los Angeles, state California. So these were the basics of Cloud Firestore. You have learned about the data model that we have to use. You have learned how to integrate Cloud Firestore into an Xcode project. And if you'd like to learn more about Firestore, then check out my other video that I've recently created, which is about using Firestore to create a very simple app like Twitter. So definitely check this one out. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.